so in lab 4 we created a customer screen and that screen populated the customer model or the customer object so if you remember we had this customer screen here with the name and code whatever data we put here and we click on submit it actually creates a customer object and that customer object was displayed on a view now this object was auto populated in other words you know without writing any kind of mapping code this object was auto populated so the question is you know how was this object auto populated because the property names of the customer class and the text box names were same so in other words you can see here that we had this customer code property and uh, the text box was with the same name customer customer code here in the same same way we had customer name property and we had a customer name text box so because you know the user interface names were absolutely same as the class property names you know this mapping was automatic but when you work in real projects user interfaces are created by web designers and models and these controllers or the c sharp code are created by developers now these web designers right you know they are kind of a very creative people so uh, you know they you know they open your html code they start designing you know they are in their own world and what they can do is they can go and change the name here like this to txt customer name you know the text box names or they can make it like uh, txt customer code now if this happens right then the auto population won't happen in other words for example now you can see here what i've done is i have changed the text box names right so now if i put here shiv and if i put 1001 if i do a submit you can see now the data is not passing why because now our property name and the user interface names are different and that's why exactly model binders helps us model binder you can think about it has that mapping code you know which will connect the user interface and your model so whenever you have such kind of different naming convention then model binders actually act like a bridge so they map your user interface name to the object name so let us go ahead and create a model binder and do this mapping so at this moment you can see here what i've done is i have changed the text box names here so the the property name and the text box names both of them are different right so let us go ahead and create a model binder so let me go and open my controller here so i'm going to go and quickly open my customer controller so let us quickly do this so let me go ahead and create a class here a model binder class now remember that uh, as a best practice you will not create the model binder class in the controller right you will actually create it in some different namespace and then you can import it import the same here and use it right but at this moment you know for simplicity sake uh, i'm going to go and create the model binder class here so i'll say here public class let's say customer binder now in order to uh, create a model binder you know you need to go and implement the i model binder interface so you can see here i have created this customer binder and the customer binder implements the i model binder interface so let me go ahead and implement this interface here so there it is now in web application when data is sent from a user interface that means from html to the server side it comes in the request object and when data is sent from the server side to the user interface that is to the client it is sent in the response object now both of these objects that is the request object and the response object they belong to the context object right so uh, the first thing is um, let it let us get access to the context object and from the context object we'll get access to the request object from the request object we'll get access to the data of both of these text boxes and then we'll pass these text box data to the customer object okay so first thing is let us try to get access to the http context object so i'll say here object context so this we will get from oops controller context dot http context right from the http context object we can get access to the request object right so 
you can see that we have the request object here and then here we can go and say request dot form like this right so what i'll do is i'll take both the customer code and customer name in a in a variable so you can see that i've created a string variable here so currently our text box name is txt customer code and txt customer name so i'll say here txt customer code here and uh, this is txt customer name here this name great so there is an error here the error is because you know this is returning a http context base object so this has to be a http context base object okay right so there it is now the next thing is we need to go and create our customer object and return back from this bind model method so i'll go and uh, create our customer object here is equal to new customer object and um, you know whatever uh, values we have got from this txt customer code and customer name uh, we will give back over here to this object here so here i'll say customer code is equal to str sorry cust code i'm sorry cust code and uh, customer name customer sorry this is a comma okay so customer name is equal to cust name right and this object i will return back so i'll say your return obj great so you can see here what we have done is we have got the access to the request object we got the text box values and we have constructed a customer object we have mapped those values we have mapped it to the object and we are sending it back from this bind model method good so i'm going to go and build this now the next thing is we need to use this customer binder and map it to our customer object right so over here you know where the ui is calling this submit action we need to go and use this code here so this code says that go and call the customer binder class and fill this customer object and then map you know the, those uh, text box values to the object and then flourish the object right so what i'll do is i'll put a debug point here so let us see how it works i'm going to go and build this rebuild the solution let us go and run this in a debug mode so there our application is running so i put a debug point so if i click on submit so there it goes you can see now um, before it goes and creates the object it actually goes and runs this bind model method of the customer binder so here it actually takes up the customer code and customer name it creates the object you know puts it here and then displays it in the ui so there it is right so now your designers can work separately on the user interface they can use front page they can use dreamweaver they can go and change you know the naming convention of the of the user interface that is text boxes and combo boxes and your developers can work separately on the c sharp code on the model on the controller and the model binder actually goes and maps both these worlds so i hope that you have enjoyed this video in this video we were trying to understand the importance of model binder so this was a very short 10 minutes video but a very important one um, so we have more 14 hours and 30 minutes spending to become a real MVC professional and the learning will continue. Um, now till now I have not discussed about why MVC. Okay, till now I have completed almost five labs. Uh, you know, we have completed so much time here, but I have not discussed about why MVC. Why MVC is better than ASP.NET Web Forms. So in the next video, I'm going to go very detailed and that's that video is going to be a big one. Why MVC? Why it is more better than ASP.NET Web Forms? Now, why I'm taking this thing on the sixth video and why not on the first video? Because my belief is that when you want to compare two things, 
you have to understand both of the things so if i had started comparing in the first video then you know things won't have been clear but now you know that how mvc works you know that there is a controller you know that there is no behind code right and all those things so now i think you know it's the right time you are well educated with mvc you you have worked with the asp.net web forms so now it is the right time to put the comparison before you and to make you understand that why mvc is better than asp.net web forms so in the next video we'll discuss about why asp.net mvc is better than asp.net web forms so 14 hours and 30 minutes are still pending let's continue the journey let's move ahead thank you so much